Hi, welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create the Little Beggar artwork that I did. The artwork is actually of a house sparrow, but I call it the Little Beggar because I saw the bird in a parking lot begging for food from its mom. I thought he was quite cute and made a great subject for my artwork. On my Etsy page, I have the pattern and the reference photo available for this artwork, and I will put a link to that in the video description below. Well, let's get started. Trace lines. Trace the pattern onto the board. Then very lightly burn over the trace lines using a writer pen tip. Make sure to keep the color on the pale side and use a light hand pressure. I am using Cole Wood's older version of a micro writer pen tip for this. Their current version works just as well, as does any standard writer pen tip. Once the trace lines are burned in, then rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. I did not record that step. Eye. Block in the dark areas on the eye. I continue to use the Micro Writer pen tip, but a small shader could also be used. I am using Circular Motion as my main burn stroke, but you can use any burn stroke that you want. Next, burn a dark, thin line along the outer edge of the eyelids. I am using Colwood's J shader for this, but a writer pen tip might be easier for this. Then lightly burn over the eyelids. I am using circular motion as my burn method. Carefully burn around the reflected light on the eye. Don't burn it very dark, we're just blocking in the area. Also, re-burn over the lower half of the eye so it is very dark in color. I didn't record that step. Now burn short pull-away strokes along the inner edge of the eyelids. Start each stroke on the seam where the eyelid touches the eye, and pull it towards the opposite side of the eyelid, stopping a short ways after you start. This will create a slight shadow next to the eye on the eyelids. Afterwards, burn circular motion over the lids to blend out the color and darken the lids. Use a writer pen tip and finish the reflected light area on the eye. I am using Colwood's C Standard Writer. It is not necessary to create an exact replica of the reference photo. Just create some spots of reflected light in the general area and it will look good. Just make sure to curve the spots so they match the curve of the eye. Lastly, re-burn over the eyelids to darken them up. Make sure to darken the area directly under the eye to create a cast shadow on the lower eyelid. There isn't a specific burn stroke that I am using. This area is so small that it doesn't matter what you use. Also, it might be easier to use a writer pen tip instead of a shader. Here's how the eye looked after I was done. Beak. Burn in the dark area inside the upper mouth. I am using Colwood's J shader for this, but it might be easier to use a writer pen tip. I use the razor edge of the shader to burn the dark lines along the edges of the beak. Then I use the flat of the shader to fill in the area with uniform color. I am using either uniform strokes or circular motion as my burn method and I'm burning the area to a dark brown or black color. Along the left edge of the beak, there is a membrane that hangs down from the beak. Burn darkly up to the edge of that membrane. Then burn darkly along the left inside edge of the beak and extend the color to the outer end of the membrane. I used circular motion for this. Then burn a line on the transition where the dark and light areas on the lower beak touch. Afterwards, block in the dark shadow on the upper beak and burn around the pale spots on the beak. I used either circular motion or uniform strokes for this. Next, 
burn in the lower beak. The outer edge of the beak is very dark, but it gets lighter as it nears the top of the lower beak. If needed, rotate the board so your pen tip is in optimal position when burning along the bottom edge of the beak. This will keep the edge crisp and clean. For the dark area on the beak, I did not increase the heat setting on my burner. Instead, I just slowed down my hand speed and did a lot of reburning to achieve the dark color. I am mostly using uniform strokes for this. Lightly burn over the darker areas on the outside of the beak. Then burn over the inside of the lower beak. Make sure that the color gets darker as you near the tongue. Also, leave the upper rim around the beak pale in color. Also burn in the tongue. Make sure the color is darker at the base of the tongue. Rotate the board as needed when working along edges that need to be sharp or crisp and clean. I continue to use either uniform strokes or circular motion as my burn method. Also, my burner is set to get a light to medium tan burn result. So to get darker colors, I have to slow down my hand speed and do a lot of reburning. I prefer to do this versus increasing the heat on my burner. And that is because working at a lower heat provides more control over the final artwork. Another benefit of burning low and slow is that mistakes are easier to fix when the burns are lighter in color. As you can see in the video, I bounce around as I work on the beat. If I work too long in one area, I don't pay as close attention to it as I should. By bouncing around, it forces me to really examine the area and compare my artwork with the reference photo. Keep in mind, I am not saying that this is something you should do. Not all artists work this way. Instead, I am just explaining why I work in this particular fashion. As I reburn over the beak, I am using the same burn strokes and techniques that were used to block it in. I am working slow and consulting with the reference photo often. I highly recommend that you do the same thing. Rushing does not produce the best artwork. Between the upper and lower beak, there is connective tissue. This tissue, or skin, is found along the left side. The skin is also a transition zone where the feathers start to appear. As I work in this area, I repeatedly burn over the skin using circular motion. I want the color to be slightly irregular. I do not want uniform color in the area. I also burn a number of thin, short lines. This is to create the start of the feather texture. While I was creating that texture, I also used some zigzag burn strokes. But you can easily stick with the single lines and create the same look. Lastly, I burned a couple of thin, curving lines to represent the wispy hairs found around the beak. Throat. Start by burning a dark line under the beak and along the front of the throat. Then extend the color a short ways. I am using the flat of the shader to get wide burn strokes that are dark in color. Use the razor edge of the shader to burn short, dark, thin lines along the left edge of the dark throat feathers. I am using a zigzag burn stroke. This means that I am burning the line using an up and down hand direction. If it is easier, burn individual lines. Regardless of how you are burning the lines, the lines need to be burned in the direction that the fur is growing. Also, the feathers along the left edge blend a bit with the white feathers, so leave little gaps here and there. Now burn in the dark throat feathers. I continue to use a zigzag burn stroke for this, but again, if it is easier, burn single lines. You may be wondering why I'm creating texture instead of burning the area to a uniform dark color. Well, the answer is that I like how the texture looks. 
Plus, I think it adds to the realism of the artwork. The benefit of starting with the dark throat feathers is that it allows you to practice in an area that doesn't show mistakes. And I think this will make things easier when we start working on lighter colored feathers. That said, it is your artwork, so if you want to make things easier and burn the area to uniform color, then please do so. I have sped up the video a lot because the burn stroke does not change. As I burn, I vary where I start and stop my zigzag burn strokes. I reburn over areas to darken them up using the same zigzag burn stroke. I can tell from looking at the video that I have increased the heat setting on my burner. If I am going to be working exclusively on a dark area for a while, then I will increase the heat setting to get the job done faster. Also, I see that occasionally I am angling the pin tip so that more metal is in contact with the board. This produces a wider burn stroke that fills in the area quicker. To finish the throat, we will work on the white feathers that are found to the right of the shadow on the throat. An arrow is pointing to the shadow I am referring to. Begin by lightly burning in the shadow and burn just below the white throat feathers. Now reburn over the feathers just below the throat. Burn single lines or zigzags. Make the lines irregular in length, vary where they start and stop, and leave gaps here and there between the lines. We are creating the transition where the throat feathers end and the body feathers begin. Next, add a number of short dark lines here and there, just a little ways above the transition. Afterwards, finish the shadow and burn pell lines and or zigzags over the feathers to give them texture and a touch of color. Lastly, add some really short, dark lines randomly in the area. Head. Burn in the dark patch of feathers between the eye and the beak. Make sure to keep the upper edge of the dark feather patch jagged. I burn zigzags and single lines along the edge to accomplish this. Away from the edge, I use the flat of the shader and burn uniform strokes. The feathers are very dark in this area, and I wasn't concerned about creating a texture. Now burn in the dark feathers around the eye. Avoid the small patch of white feathers to the left of the eye. It might be easier to use a writer pen tip for that. I am primarily using the zigzag burn stroke, but I also burn some single lines. It is important to keep the outer edges of the feathers jagged. We do not want crisp lines forming. Now let's work on the brown feather patch to the left of the eye. The same guidelines apply for the brown patch that were used on the black patch. Keep the outer edges of the patch jagged. Use the zigzag burn stroke to create the texture. If you prefer, burn a lot of single lines instead of the zigzag burn stroke. Regardless of what burn stroke you use, vary where you start and stop the burn stroke. Also, burn the lines in the direction the feathers are growing. Because the color is lighter in value, the texture is much easier to see. For this reason, do not use the flat of the shader. We want the lines on the brown patch to be thin. I recommend rotating the board to see if it makes it easier to burn in the feathers. Some directions are just easier than others. Another reason to rotate the board is that it makes the artwork less familiar to your eyes. A lot of times you will notice things that you did not notice before. Just make sure to rotate the reference photo so that it matches the direction of the board. The upper edge of the brown patch, or the right edge, that would be the right edge in the video right now, is lightest in color than the opposite edge. The color gets darkest near the eye and along the transition to the white feathers. I circled the spot on the reference photo. Directly under the lower eyelid, I burned the area to a dark brown or black color. Just below that, 
I use circular motion to give the area irregular color and texture. As with most of my burning, I reburn over the area to build up the color. Afterwards, I finish up the brown feather patch by adding another layer of zigzags. Remember that you can burn single lines instead. Now let's work on the gray feather patch on the top of the head. First burn along the upper edge of the pale patch. I marked it on the reference photo. Then use either circular motion or a zigzag type of motion using the flat of the shader. The goal is to create small, irregular shaped patches of pale color. Afterwards, reburn over the feathers. Make sure to keep the pale patch the lightest in color. Also, make sure that the center ridge line is the darkest. An arrow is pointing to the center ridge line I am referring to. As I reburn over the gray feathers, I use the same burn methods that I did to block it in. That means I'm using zigzag burn strokes, single lines, some circular motion, and the zigzag type of motion using the flat of the shader. The last thing I did was add some very short, dark lines here and there. The lines are created by tapping the edge of the pin tip to the board. There is not very much metal in contact with the board, so the lines are thin and very short. The last area we need to work on is the white feather patch below the eye. Make sure the heat on your burner is set to get a light to medium tan burn result. Begin by burning light tan lines or zigzags around the pattern markings. These markings indicate the direction the feathers are growing and they mark the location of shadows or slightly darker feathers. Then burn single lines or zigzags just below the white feather patch. This will create the jagged edge that is found along the bottom of the feather patch. Next, add more single lines or zigzags onto the white feather patch. Examining the reference photo, reveals a number of small areas of slightly darker color on the white feathers. To me, they resemble small, pale gray feathers, and maybe that's what they are versus markings or shadows. Most of the color is located on the cheek area. I circled that area on the reference photo. Hopefully, you have noticed that I have reburned over the feathers several times. Each time, I add more lines and zigzags to the area to build up the color and texture. Is my artwork an exact replica of the reference photo? Heck no, but it is more than adequate for this artwork. The feathers appear white, and they have some texture to them, versus looking like unburned wood. I'm happy with it. Mantle Begin by burning short lines along the outer edges on the mantle feathers. Also, block in this dark feather or shadow beneath the mantle. They are called mantle feathers because on some birds, like this one, these feathers look like the bird is wearing a shawl or mantle on its shoulders. Burn in the dark markings on the feathers. Leave the left edge lighter in color than the right. Burn each marking individually. Then burn in the rest of the feather, including the row of small dark markings near the white head feathers. I am using the zigzag burn stroke. If you prefer, just burn a series of single lines instead. The important thing is to burn each feather individually. Also, leave the left edge slightly paler in color than the rest of the feather. This will help differentiate between the feathers. As you burn zigzags or single lines, make sure to vary where you start and stop your burn strokes. Vary how long the lines are. Vary the color, but keep the color within a few shades of each other. If you examine the reference photo, you can see that the outer edges of the feathers are a bit rough. Make sure to keep the outer edges of the feathers on your artwork jagged to replicate this. To create a jagged edge, 
use the side of the shader to burn thin, darker lines randomly along the outer edge of the feather. Vary how long these lines are. These darker lines will create the shadow on the lower feather and break up the edge on the upper feather. Now repeat the same process on the remaining feathers. I personally like to burn in the dark markings first. I actually do this for a couple of reasons. One, it makes it easier for me to match the features on my artwork with the reference photo. And two, I know the rest of the feather will need to be lighter in color than the dark marking. As you can see, you can burn in all of the dark markings and then work on the rest of the feathers, or you can burn in a dark marking on one feather and then burn in the rest of that feather. The order things are done really doesn't matter. Either way will produce great results. It is important to burn one feather at a time. This produces better realism. Hopefully, you have noticed that I tend to do a lot of reburning. I first block in an area to give the area shape and a base color. Then I start the reburning process, which involves reburning over the area a number of times. Each time I reburn over the area, I further darken and define the area. Part of defining an area is making sure that the left edge of the feathers on the mantle are jagged. I also work at keeping the left edge lighter in color than the right edge on each feather. Take your time and consult with the reference photo often. When comparing your artwork with the reference photo, check for the color of the feather and any markings the feather may have. Don't worry about trying to create an exact replica of the reference photo. That's not our goal. Our goal is to create a realistic looking bird, and the reference photo is just a tool to help us with that. Back and Rump Begin by burning a lot of single lines or zigzags along the left edge of each feather. The left edge coincides with the pattern lines, so essentially we are just darkening up the pattern lines. Since the feathers are gray in color, Make sure they are a number of shades paler in tonal value than the mantle feathers. Use the flat of the shader and lightly burn over the feathers to give them a base color. I do want to mention that I will explain this feather between the mantle and the wing at the end of this chapter. I mark the feather with a circle on the reference photo. Continue to re-burn over the pattern lines and darken up the feathers on the back. Some of the gray feathers overlap onto the tail. Treat those feathers just like the rest of the feathers on the back. Darken the pattern lines and lightly burn over the rest of the feather. There are a few gray feathers near the wing that have long, hair-like strands on them. To simplify this area, we are going to ignore that and treat these feathers just like the rest of the feathers on the back. As you probably noticed, I do a fair amount of reburning on the back feathers. I darken up the trace lines, which mark the left edge of one feather and the right edge of the adjacent feather. I also reburn over the feather surface. Occasionally, I burn some slightly darker short lines here and there in the areas where I see shadows on the reference photo. I marked an area with an arrow. One thing to keep in mind as you work on the back is that the pale feathers need to be dark enough to stand out from the unburned background. By the time I am done with this chapter, you will see that I have made my back feathers darker than what the reference photo shows. I did that to ensure the feathers stand out from the background. I will point out that only the feathers adjacent to the background should be darkened up but I darkened them all up so that they matched. The white feathers on the rump curve upward towards the tail. There are some shadows between the layers of the upper feather groups. Burn a series of short lines or zigzags to create those shadows. Also, burn in the darker feathers found on the rump near the base of the tail. Afterwards, 
burn in the shadows on the rump feathers. Then burn over the remaining feathers using long, gentle, curving burn strokes. Make sure to keep the color in the light tan range. At this point, all of the feathers are blocked in, so now it is a matter of reburning over the feathers until they are as dark as you desire. Continue to use the same techniques for the reburning process that you have been using all along. I have sped up the video considerably since there isn't anything new or unique going on. The background adjacent to the rump feathers needs to be darkened up. There are two reasons for this. One, it will provide contrast so that the rump feathers stand out. And two, it will help ensure that the rump feathers look white. I only darkened a small area adjacent to the rump feathers. You can do the same or extend the color a lot further. It's your artwork, so customize it to your preferences. Once the background by the rump was done, I resumed darkening up the back feathers. This is my final reburn on the back feathers. During this reburn, I am reburning over the trace lines, but this time there's a slight difference. I'm extending the color towards the left edge of the feather. I stop before reaching the left edge. This leaves a pale band along that outer left edge of each feather, and this helps differentiate between the feathers. This is the same thing that was done with the mantle feathers. Lastly, let's take care of the wispy feather. Begin by burning semi-long lines that curve in the direction the wispy strands lay. Vary how long the lines are, and vary the tonal value of the lines. We are building the foundation for the area, so don't worry about replicating the photo. Along the bottom and right edge of the wispy feather, burn some darker, thin lines. These lines represent the gaps between the strands on the feather, where the underlying wing is visible. Make sure the heat setting on your burner is set to produce a light to medium tan burn result. We need to work in a slow and controlled manner. The slower we work, the lower the heat setting should be. That will help ensure the feather remains pale in color. This wispy feather is probably the most complex area on the bird. It is not part of the focal point, so it doesn't need the amount of detail that I have created. Quite truthfully, I have a tendency to go overboard with detail because I really enjoy creating highly detailed things. Tell. Begin by burning over the pattern lines, and then darken up the lower right corner of the tail. The reference photo shows white feathers along the outer edge in this area. Since the white feathers won't show against the unburned background, I'm burning them to a darker color. There is a white band or white marking along the left edge of each tail feather. I like to burn a line around the outer edges of the feather so that it is easy to see it. Then I fill in the feather using either uniform strokes or pull-away strokes. But I leave the left edge unburned or very light in color. You may have noticed that the white marking or band does not appear on the pattern. Since the tail is closed, there is only a small portion of each tail feather that is visible. I felt that adding a line for the white marking would just make it hard to tell individual feathers apart, so I left it out. On the really narrow feathers, I burn a series of thick lines along the back edge. Each thick line gets a little closer to the front edge. I don't burn right up to the front edge since it is white in color. Where space allows, I burn either pull-away strokes or uniform strokes over the feather. Again, I leave the front or the left edge either unburned or very pale in color. As you can see, I am bouncing around the tail as I work on different feathers. I point this out because there is not a set way that things must be done. Instead, it is personal preference. 
You may prefer to work right to left, top to bottom, or some other direction. It is your artwork, so do what feels natural to you. Part of the reason I bounce around so much is that I like to burn in the darker areas first. There are a couple of shadows found near the upper feathers, so I'm blocking them in. I do want to point out that it is not necessary to create an exact replica of the reference photo. The reference photo is just a guideline to help you with the artwork. The tail would look just fine if you simplify it. To simplify it, burn all the feathers to a uniform medium brown color and leave the left or the front edge a light tan color. If you are struggling with this artwork, then I highly recommend simplifying things. Every piece of artwork you create gives you experience. The more experience you have, the easier pyography becomes. As of August 2023, I have well over 2,000 hours of pyography experience. Many things I found difficult when I first started are now easy to do. Plus, there are things I can do now that I couldn't even begin to do when I was first learning pyography. The times when I learned the most is when I pushed myself to create things that were challenging. I rotated the board to make it easier to create a semi-clean line along the white band or marking found on the outer edge of the narrow feather. Burning in this position not only makes it easy to see where the white marking should be, but it also helps prevent me from accidentally burning over the white marking. I want to point out that I burned a dark line along the edge of the outermost feather. I did this so that the edge would stand out from the unburned background. If you plan to add a background, then this step is probably not something you need to do. I mentioned before that I have learned the most when I pushed myself to try and create challenging artwork. I think the same thing will happen to you. Don't be afraid to try difficult pyography projects. What is the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't turn out. Regardless of that, you still gain valuable experience. As I finish up the tell, there are two things that I am concentrating on. One, reducing the size of the white marking or the white band along the edge of each feather. And two, darkening up the right edge of each feather. This will create a slight shadow from the adjacent feather onto the feather. Wing. Burn a dark curving line along the front of the wing. Add some jaggedness just past the rounded part. Then burn in the dark feathers on the shoulder. Keep the upper edge of the feathers jagged. The jagged edge will become the stray wisps of the above feathers overlapping onto the dark feathers. Next, give the shoulder feathers a base layer of color and texture. I am using the zigzag burn stroke for this, but use whatever burn stroke you prefer. The shoulder curves downward, so the lower portion of the brown feathers on the shoulder are slightly shadowed. As you work, make the color on the brown feathers get gradually darker as you reach the lower edge of the area. Make sure you burn the feathers in the direction that they grow. The feathers along the right edge of the shoulder follow the curve of the shoulder. The feathers adjacent to the gray feathers above are angled towards the left. There are a couple of small dark feathers peeking out below the brown feathers on the shoulder. As you encounter them, burn them in. I have sped up the video considerably because all I am doing is burning zigzags onto the shoulder area. I burned a base layer of zigzags to give the shoulder color and texture. Then I start the reburning process, which just means I'm reburning over the shoulder using the exact same zigzag burn stroke. This is done to build up the color and texture on the area. Take your time during the reburning process. The multiple layers of zigzags or single lines 
is what gives the artwork a lot of tonal depth. The gray feathers at the top of the shoulder are burned in using the same techniques as the brown ones. Just make sure that the color is a number of shades lighter than the brown feathers. Also, make sure that the gray feathers are a number of shades darker than the adjacent white feathers on the bird's neck. As I do the numerous reburnings, there is one thing I concentrate on, and that is making sure that the shadowed areas become the darkest areas on the brown feathers. As I do this, I also make sure that the black feathers remain darker. Another thing I do is make sure that the lower edge of the brown feathers are a bit jagged. In fact, I do the same thing with the lower edge of the gray feathers found on the upper part of the shoulder. The jaggedness creates better realism than a straight line would. I saved the last of the reburning on the gray feathers for last. The reason is that the brown feathers are done, and that makes it easier to determine how dark the gray feathers can be. As I said before, the gray feathers need to be darker than the white feathers above them, but they also need to be much lighter in value than the brown feathers below. Now we're going to work on the next group of feathers on the wing. Begin by burning around the edges of the white feathers to define their boundaries. Then block in the brown feathers to the left of the white row of feathers. These feathers do not have a lot of texture on them. So I'm using the flat of the shader and burning uniform strokes as I burn them in. Any feathers that have a dark marking, burn in that dark marking first. This will make it easier to match up the feathers with the reference photo. Rotate the board as needed to ensure that the markings have clean edges. Make sure to rotate the reference photo so it matches the direction your board is rotated. The dark markings do not have a noticeable texture on them, so use your preferred burn stroke and burn them to a uniform dark brown to black color. I am using uniform strokes as my burn method. Once in a great while, I use a little bit of circular motion. I do have the heat on my burner turned up a little. It's up high enough to get a dark color, but not so high that I get overburn. While the heat is turned up, I only work on the dark markings. After the markings are done, I turn the heat back down until I get a medium to dark tan burn result. Then start defining the edges between the feathers. If I had been paying better attention to the reference photo, I would have burned in this small dark feather while the heat was turned up on my burner. Then I wouldn't have had to re-burn over it several times. I am burning a pale colored zigzag stroke over the white feathers. This will give the area a touch of color and some much needed texture. Don't leave white feathers unburned. In fact, don't leave white fur unburned. The reason is that it ends up looking like wood you forgot to burn in. Next, start blocking in the dark feather below the brown ones. Also, begin blocking in the brown portion of the feathers in this group. I am using the razor edge of the shader to burn tiny little lines along the upper and lower edge of the white feathers. This is done, I'm doing this to make the area more jagged. As I work on the brown portion of the covert feathers, I am using either uniform strokes or some circular motion to burn them in. The reason I can use circular motion on the feathers is that they are smooth looking. They do not have a noticeable texture. The goal with these feathers is to create smooth, semi-uniform color. With that in mind, use whatever burn stroke you feel comfortable with that can accomplish this goal. With the exception of the two dark feathers, the color you burn these feathers to should match the color of the shoulder feathers. Work one feather at a time as you are burning in the wing. Take your time as you're burning in the feathers. 
rushing to finish a project very seldom produces good results. As needed, rotate the board to make it easier when burning along the bottom edge of the feathers. In fact, I recommend rotating the board on occasion as you create any pyography artwork. The reason is that the artwork will look less familiar to your brain. This makes it easier to concentrate on the tonal values and shadows of the subject. Often you will notice things that you didn't notice before. As I burn in the lower brown feathers, I am leaving the right edge of each feather a touch paler in color than the rest of the feather. Also, I burn a thin, slightly darker line along the left edge of each feather. This is done to help each individual feather stand out a little more. I keep the edges within a few shades of the rest of the feather. The color difference should not be extreme. The right edge on a couple of the upper brown feathers are frayed. These edges need to be jagged to represent what the reference photo is showing. I am using the razor edge of the shader to burn zigzags along the right side of the feathers. If it is easier, burn a series of single lines instead. Regardless of the method used, make sure to vary the length of the burn strokes. Something that should go without saying is the fact that you should be consulting with the reference photo often. The more complex the area you're burning in, the more often you should be checking with the reference photo. I'm burning a series of lines onto the row of white feathers. This will give them texture, a touch of color, and help create the impression of individual feathers. I mentioned before about the need to check with the reference photo often. There are several things I check when I consult with the reference photo. I evaluate the tonal area of the spot that I am burning. I also compare this value with adjacent areas to see how the color compares. Now it's time for the last group of feathers on the wing, the flight feathers. Begin by defining the edges of a feather and burning in any dark markings it may have. This is the same thing that we just did with the covert feathers. The only difference is that these feathers are longer. If needed, rotate the board and work on the wing in a different direction. Some directions are easier to burn in than others, and you'll have to experiment and see what works best for you. I have sped up the video considerably as I burn in the top few flight feathers. There is nothing unique or special about these feathers. The techniques needed to burn them in are the same that were used on the covert feathers we just finished. I was talking before about the need to consult with the reference photo. One of the first things I check is the tonal value of the area that I am burning in. Then I compare that area with the adjacent areas. Is the spot I'm burning on lighter, darker, or the same? These are things that I pay attention to. Also, I look for things that are unique or special about the feather. An example of that was the frayed right edge that was found on some of the covert feathers. You probably noticed that the video slowed back down when I started working on the longer flight feathers. What I'm doing hasn't changed much. These feathers have a pell edge on them. I burn a line marking where that pell edge starts, and then I burn in the rest of the feather. Even though I am using a shader pin tip for all of this, it would be easier to use a writer pin tip to burn the line along the pell edge and along the outer edge of the feather. Take your time and work in an order that makes sense to you. For example, work from top to bottom. By this I mean start at the top of the wing and completely burn in the first feather, then burn in the feather below that one, and so on. For some reason, I almost always burn in the darker areas first. With some situations, this makes sense to do so, but the feathers don't have to be burned in that way. Instead, it's just my personal preference. So seriously, do what makes sense to you. 
As you work, check with the reference photo often and look for little details that make each feather unique. Every little detail does not need to be replicated, but the more little details you include, the more realistic the artwork will look. I have blocked in the dark areas on the feathers, and now I am reburning over those dark areas to get them to their needed color. Also, I further define their edges. I will admit that it would be much easier to burn in the lower feathers using a writer pen tip. I'm happen to be super careful with the shader and hold it at some pretty steep angles to make sure I don't burn onto the pale edges. There is a little group of dark feathers along the bottom of the wing adjacent to the covert feathers. These feathers start out a tan color and turn black near the halfway mark. I simplified them in my artwork and burned them to a dark color with a paler edge. This is an example of how it is not necessary to capture every detail. Or if you prefer, you can call it artistic license. Now that the dark markings are done, it's time to burn in the pale borders on the feathers. Also, this is the time that I add the thin lines along the lower edges of some of the feathers. I use the razor edge of the shader to create the thin lines. These lines replicate the frayed edges seen on the reference photo. When I'm burning in the pale border, I am primarily using uniform strokes as my burn method, but I also use some circular motion. The majority of the burn strokes are burned in a vertical direction. Another thing I should mention is that I don't try to keep the burn strokes uniform in color. A little tonal variety is not only acceptable, but it is preferable. I think it adds to the realism. Begin by burning in the shadows along the right side of the belly. This is probably the chest area, but we're going to call it the belly anyway. I'm using a zigzag burn stroke. I vary where I start and stop the burn strokes. This will ensure that the edges of the shadows are jagged. I also add a few dark short lines here and there. These lines are the transition between the dark throat feathers and the white belly feathers. Next, start blocking in the shadow under the wing. I use uniform strokes when burning adjacent to the wing. This is to minimize the risk of accidentally burning on the wing. Once I'm a little ways past the wing, I switch to a zigzag burn stroke. Once the shadow is blocked in, then start working on the rest of the belly. And for this, I will be using the zigzag burn stroke. The feathers on the belly look like short strands of hair to me. So the zigzag burn stroke works well with this type of texture. If you're not comfortable with the zigzag burn stroke, then burn single lines instead. Either method will work great. There are a couple of places where I did not use the zigzag burn stroke. The first area was on the shadow under the wing. I used a lot of circular motion in this area. The second was along the left edge of the belly. I burned a number of long strokes to create the long feathers found in the area. The rest of the time, I used the zigzag burn stroke on the belly. As I am creating the texture on the belly, I alternate between using the flat of the shader and the razor edge of the shader. The razor edge produces thin lines, and I use the razor edge when I want a more pronounced hair texture. The flat of the shader produces wide burn marks. Since I'm moving my hand very quickly in a zigzag motion, this creates irregular or uneven color, and that creates vague shadows and subtle texture. Start with the back foot. Burn in the darker markings on the legs and the shadows. The back foot is mostly in shadows from the bird's body so the overall color will be a touch darker than the front foot and leg. Along the bottom of the feet are oblong-shaped pads that stick out a little bit from the foot surface. When you encounter these pads, 
burn around the edges of them, but leave the center paler in color. This will help create a slight 3D effect on them. I am using circular motion as my main burn stroke. I picked circular motion because it's easy to create slightly irregular color with it. I'm letting that irregular color help create some of the texture found on the foot. I do want to mention that no one is going to pay that much attention to the feet, so don't worry about making them perfect. After the foot is blocked in, then start the reburning process to darken it up. Use the same techniques for the reburning that you used for the blocking in. As you can see, I burned in the ground around the foot before I did the reburning. I wanted the ground to be darker than the foot. Since the ground is done, I can make sure that the foot is lighter in color as I reburn over it. I am using the razor edge of the shader to burn really thin lines along the top of the foot. This is to create the segments I see on the foot. Quite truthfully, it is a level of detail that is not necessary. Instead, it is just my ultra picky need for minute detail manifesting itself. I kept the claws pale in color so they would stand out from the background. Lastly, I added some small bumps to the leg. I created them by burning circles here and there onto the leg. Burn in the dark shadow under the front foot. The foot needs to be lighter in color than the shadow, so this gives us a starting point for the tonal values of the foot. Then start blocking in the darker areas on the foot and leg. I started by blocking in the back of the leg, the darker segments on the leg, and the darker areas along the lower portion of the toes. At this point, we are just giving the front leg a little color and some shape, so don't worry about being perfect. As you can see, the ground has been burned in. This makes it easier for me to decide the tonal values of the leg and foot. I have two goals. One, the leg and foot should be lighter in color than the background, and two, that the front leg is similar in color to the back leg. As I work, I am concentrating on the darker areas of the foot and leg. I am using either uniform strokes or circular motion as my burn methods. I do not have the heat set very high on my burner. It is set to get a medium tan burn result. Burning at a lower heat allows me to work at a slower pace. In areas where there is a lot of detail, I really prefer to work slowly. I have found that this helps prevent a lot of mistakes. As I am working on the foot and leg, I block in new areas and reburn over old ones. This allows me to not only build up the color and texture on the entire leg, but it also keeps the color consistent within the different areas on the leg and foot. I am not saying that this is the best way to burn in the leg. Instead, I am just explaining what I do and why. You can decide what aspects of this you want to incorporate into your style of working. Make sure to leave the upper edge of each toe lighter in color than the toe behind it. This will help the toes stand out from each other. It does not need to be a huge color difference. If needed, darken up the lower portion of the toes to increase the contrast between the upper edge and the bottom of the toe. This is done to help the toes stand out from each other. It allows the viewer to see individual toes. Lastly, I add a few bumps by burning small circles on the foot. With the ground, I did my own thing that is loosely based on the reference photo. I begin by creating a small pebble or rock by burning around the area I want the pebble to be. I use circular motion as my main burn stroke. I picked circular motion because I wanted tonal variety for this texture. I also used some uniform strokes. I use the flat of the shader as I'm burning because I don't want the pebbles to have crisp or clearly defined edges. 
make sure to vary the size and shape of the pebbles. Depending on your comfort level, you might prefer to draw in the rocks or pebbles with a pencil first. Also, keep the shape more oblong versus round or circular. Really round or circular shapes will appear as though we're viewing straight down at it, and that is not the look we're after. Also, because the belly is very pale in color, make sure that the ground extends all the way up to the belly. This will accomplish three things. First, it will define the edges of the belly. Second, it will help the viewer clearly see the location of the belly. And third, as the artwork ages, the edges of the belly will continue to be visible. And that is something that would not happen with the color of the belly that it currently is. If you do not want to burn in the background, then the belly feathers need to be much darker than what I did on my artwork. Rotate the board as needed when working adjacent to the legs and feet. We want the legs and feet to have clearly defined edges. As you are working, Use a shader that you are comfortable with. When I first started the background, I was using my largest shader. I thought this would prevent me from getting too detailed with the texture. I also thought I would be able to burn it in quicker with a larger shader. The problem was, I didn't feel comfortable with that shader, especially when working near the feet and the legs. I felt like I was burning over the feet, or just about to, so I switched to this much smaller shader that you see in the video. The smaller shader felt very comfortable because I could easily control it when burning next to the legs and feet. I mentioned before that circular motion is my primary burn stroke while creating the ground texture. As I've been doing the video editing for this tutorial, I have noticed that I'm also using a zigzag type of motion. When this happens, I am using the flat of the shader and burning in a left to right direction, but I also slowly move vertically downward. This creates just a hint of pebbles at the surface of the ground. It's a very subtle texture. With the pebbles, I create a slight shadow adjacent to the pebbles by burning a wide, darker line along the right and lower edge of the pebbles. The larger the pebble, the wider the line. Then I burn a layer of circular motion over the pebble to give it color and slight texture. There are two more things I want to mention, and then I'm done with the ground. First, the further back you get from the feet, the less texture the ground should have. This will help push that area further into the background. Lastly, I darkened up the ground directly below the bird to create a cast shadow. This had the added benefit of helping the belly and the legs stand out more. Here is a close-up of the ground on my artwork. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you found the information informative. As I said before, the pattern and reference photo are available on my Etsy page, and I'll have a link to that in the description below. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I do have a lot of free patterns and free written tutorials, and I'll put a link to my website in the description below too. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.